My name is Sandy Martinez. I am the founder of Women of Web3. I, it brings me so much joy to be able to be here. This is our first Art Basel event. So way to go, ladies, for joining me. And we have more to come. But what we're going to go over next is a little bit about what Women of Web3 is and what our impact is focused on. So. You know, all of this began at the United Nations. We received uh, a special invite to showcase women and all of their contributions at the 78th Science Summit this past September. So we had the honor to be able to share the, ex the impact and also the, the difference that these in women here have made in the ecosystem. And I have, it's very awesome to be able to see their growth as well. So today we're gonna have a candid conversation about our experience, about them as a leader and what they have contributed to the ecosystem. So I'm gonna hand it over to our co-founder, Anana, so she can share a little bit about her background and how she has contributed to the ecosystem and what her role is with Women of Web3. Thank you very much, Sandy, for the introduction. I am Ana Isabel, or some, some people know me as Anana. I had the pleasure to know Beat Basel a year ago. They basically changed my life with the Moon Project. So my achievements is, of course, sending an NFT to the Moon very soon. <laughs> And of course, with you guys being in the United Nations, uh, last September was one of the best things that happened in my career. And uh, well, my NFT that's going to the moon is called Pretty Eyes. It's gonna be a funding for uh, pay for the cataract operation for my mom and for more operations. And yeah, basically, Basically, I am uh, trying to reduce the rent g gender gap with everything that I do, and I am so happy to be with you here. Yeah, wonderful, thank you. And Leslie. Hello, everyone. This is Leslie, and I am happy to be here. And I am the founder of Women of Basketball, which is an initiative to bring awareness to the masses of how under-resourced and how undervalued the women of the junior college are and, you know, how we can also educate <laughs> um, on the blockchain and the importance of being in this space. I also am the VP of Operations for Goxting Media where we do report on blockchain, Web3, NFTs, and content creation, and also educating people as to what we do in this space and the beauty of it and how we can bring more uh, women, men, young ladies, and you know, everybody into this amazing ecosystem and then just breaking those barriers around the world. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Gigi. Um, my full name is Giannina Scarlett, but I think most of you know me as Gigi. <laughs> I'm a previous software engineer, came into the space as a founder of a collection called CryptoTech Women, which is a utility-based NFT that gives you access to education around Web3, tech, and AI. Besides that, I'm also a creator. I host spaces focused on, on education within the topics of creators, growth, um, engineering, and Web3, obviously. <laughs> and yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Shireen Ahmed, but everyone knows me as Katz. Um, I wear a lot of hats in Web3. Um, First and foremost, I have a small project called V Rose. Um, it was inspired by Gary Vaynerchuk and my grandma Rose, and it is basically calling people to have actionable gestures to spread in love and kindness. We've given over 7,000 roses over the blockchain and over 10,000 in real life. And we hope to continue this incentive by having 1 billion V friends vending machines across the world for children in hospitals and schools. So that's one big initiative. Um, second thing that I do is very community driven. I am a producer at Takeover and we host community events. We started with 
V friends and we moved to Reno Sports and now we collectively have a lot of Web3 communities coming under their one umbrella to celebrate shared dreams and shared resources. So thank you very much, very happy to be here. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. And so to share a little bit about my background, so I am, I'm an education advocate. I worked at Arizona State University for almost two decades. And the last thing I did on my last, well, the thing I did on my last day at ASU is I bought my first NFT. I was immediately immersed in the ecosystem, learning the verbiage, the jargon, you know, learning how to buy crypto, and I struggled. I definitely struggled. Um, it was a lot of calls to friends that have crypto, that have bought NFT collections, so I'm pretty sure I annoyed them. But along that journey, I became a Twitter space host. I started translating things in Spanish for our community. But one thing that I realized is that the global investors, the women, also needed support. They also needed guidance, they also needed encouragement um, in the ecosystem. And so that propelled me to step out of my comfort zone, go to different Twitter spaces where I met all of these wonderful women. So that led me to uh, begin my own radio show in Spanish called Web3 Al Aire. So I have a passion in supporting the Latino community and making sure that they don't stay behind with this new technology and in this innovative industry. And then along that, um, it was pretty amazing to be able to meet these women, to be able to see their growth throughout you know, the months that we have known each other. And that is how the project came together. I have friends that work with the United Nations, and one of them was my former executive coach at ASU. And she reached out to me to learn a little bit more about Web3 and the work that I was doing. And so with that, I shared, you know, like, you know, I'm so, uh, these women have such incredible stories. Their growth has been amazing. They have made an impact on one another. And in the industry, they have added value to each other, lifting each other up, you know, speaking their names in rooms of opportunity. And so I said, I really want to share this globally. And it would be amazing amazing to do so at the UN. I would like to take the microphone for a moment and, and uh, just create some awareness of everybody networking. We have food out there and we really want to listen to the women of Web3 that are visiting us here from Mexico, from the state of Arizona, from many multiple different places around the world. I really want to give her a chance to uh, have an awesome time uh, here with us in Miami. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Jorge. Um, so to sum that up, it was very important for me to be able to share with others the impact that these incredible trailblazers are having in the industry. And so when my friend also in that call said that she can definitely help me with that dream of mine, I immediately thought about 16 other women that could join me, join me in that conversation. And so here we are with leaders that have made a difference, with leaders that have their own projects. So one of the things that was really amazing is that we came together in New York to be able to share our stories and the impact that we made. And we accomplished quite a bit. So I'm gonna have Anana share with you a little bit about how this, all of our success at the UN and how immediately we made an impact in our ecosystem. Thank you, well, Lucia is not here, but Lucia Diaz was able to create a project where we get together more than 100 uh, Latin artists on exhibiting of the, on the day of the Peace Day. That was also the day of our, our UN session. We also created the first NFT that represented a session of the UN attached to a metaverse that is still alive and is going to be alive forever. And we're, we're going to be given master classes, each one of us. We're also, we also, we, we funded uh, 1.03 ETH that is going to be given to scholarships for girls and teenagers so they can learn AI. So with these technological tools, we can really create a change today. And we are 
looking forward for the, our next events in Mexico City. And, well, we can, we can... Yeah, so as, as Anana shared, we definitely accomplished a lot after our session. And what began as a beautiful initiative now is a momentum. So we have found that there's more women that would like to join, uh, you know, helping us with our mission. There's more women that want to be able to receive guidance from these incredible trailblazers. And so we're expanding, we're continuing our growth. What's to come for us is a session at the UN for International Women's Day that is in the works. We also will have an event in Mexico and talk about the disruption in the industry with our, our, our Web3 Familia there. So we're really excited about that and then we will make an appearance at VCon. So we'll be in LA doing incredible things. But one thing that I want you to take away from these ladies is what has helped you thrive in the ecosystem? So share what has propelled you, what are some things that other women should consider developing or skills that will help them be successful? I, for me, one of the things that has helped me in this space is really educating myself and really understanding how the blockchain works, how crypto works, and also getting to learn from each of these ladies in this space, you know, learning from their skill sets, learning from whatever their expertise is. And I always see it as um, there are teachers, there are students, and you always have to be a student of the game. And it's okay if you don't know. It's very important to ask questions. Ask questions, and if you are the smartest person in the space, if you are the smartest person in the room, then you need to move on to a different room because then you're not learning and you're not progressing and you're not growing. And also one of the things that I've learned from these amazing ladies is that they all have a uniqueness about them that makes them very special. And with that, I've learned a little bit from each one that is not within my skill set and how they empower one another for us to continue to grow and succeed within this space. So for, for me, obviously, I, I'm going to start with education. If you are in this space or in any emerging space and you do not educate yourself, mm -hmm. you're setting yourself up to lose. That's just what you're doing. You may not know that you're doing it, but if you're not educated enough to understand what you're doing and what things you're supposed to be doing, there's no way you're going to grow. Now, a lot of people say, we hear education, but we don't know where to find it. I don't see education. So obviously curating your circles in a way that you can learn from others that do education, that do cohorts, that do videos about it. So being also active on the way that you're curating your circles, the people that you follow, is really, really important. And lastly, the power of networking. Networking is a skill that we all have to learn. It doesn't matter if you feel you're too shy, you're not confident enough, no one cares about the excuses. You have to put yourself out there and do the work to get connected to more opportunities. And this opportunity might be your opportunity to change someone's life or someone else changing yours. But you will never get there if you don't start networking today and finding people that you align with that inspire you, that makes you want to grow a little bit more out of your shell and push yourself forward. Okay. <laughs> the ladies have said almost the most important points, but um, I think what I look forward in days to come is a more inclusive and diverse community um, with women from all over the world. I think it's very important to f make fee people feel welcome, to let them know that there is a safe space for everyone and no one is too small or too big for any game. Um, we need to make sure that we open those gates and have representation and role models and someone who looks like us or thinks like us or has the same background like us. It's very important for us to stand up and be that representation. Um, one thing that Leslie said is, if you're the smartest person in the room, look for a better room. I'll just add to that and say that if you are, um, if you have built a skill set that you think that you can share with others, don't limit that. Don't token 
gate or gatekeep any information. Just be a beacon of hope. And um, the last thing I want to say is we need to celebrate each other a lot more than we do. And in this space, we are on to the next very quickly. And I don't think we take a pause to celebrate one another and, you know, tick mark the milestone that we've already achieved. So I just want to add to those points, but thank you very much. Those were really good points. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. So big round of applause for Kat, for Shireen, for Gigi, and for Leslie. So we're going to end with you three by sharing what is one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? One piece of advice that comes to mind is that this space is a very scary space, but let that fear be your motivation, your driver, your force, and having fear is okay, but never allow it to be your stopping force. My advice would be to stop listening to others because you are the only person that will have to live with the actions that you take and the choices that you make. So when you think you have a great idea or you love your outfit or you are just really excited about something and someone else tears it down, it's okay, right? Like everyone has their own opinion and that's the beauty about opinions. Everyone can have one, but at the end of the day, don't listen to others and follow that passion that, that drives you because otherwise you're going to maybe end up in a place where you regret that you never did what you wanted to because you listened to others. Love Oof, if someone had told me that two years ago. <laughs> Uh, no, um, I feel like I want to speak on social equity. Um, please enjoy the journey that you're on. I think it's very important then always taking the next step and realizing that, yes, you can have those milestones, but take one day at a time. Please enjoy your journey because if you're already there, then you're, not, you're missing out on all of the learnings and the failures, which will only enhance your skill and will be useful at a later stage in life. And use your social equity very cleverly, only because you know somebody. Make sure you're checking yourself before asking for that because maybe they're able to help you but you're not ready to receive it. So make sure you're ready to receive what you're asking for. Yeah, that's it, thank you. Wonderful, so big round of applause for these ladies. Thank you for joining us. So next up, we're gonna have Wildy Martinez to join us on stage. Thank you. So Wildy, let's get started with a brief introduction about your work. Can I stand up or is it gonna mess up the camera? <laughs> I feel like <laughs> um, I won't mess up the camera. My name is Wildy Martinez, uh, also known as Wildflower Fields. I am the founder of Wildflower Fields and the hard artist behind it. It's a creative movement brand to celebrate the art of self-embrace through art, fashion, and storytelling. Um, super proud of it. And I've been in the fashion industry for 20 years in New York City. And, you know, like everyone else, two years ago, I bumped into NFTs, being curious, and started minting my fashion illustrations, and fell in love with the community, fell in love with how different it is. If you're from the fashion world, you know that it is cutthroat and very competitive, and I think because Web3 is so new, it created a even playing field, I think, for creators, creating so much beauty and helping each other out. And it's such a beautiful network because I can reach out to artists like Amber Vittoria and DM her and be like, hey, can you help me out? And she will, because she's in Web3. Or reach out to somebody I admire in the fashion industry and it's just such a beautiful place to grow together because it is still new. And we can make the rules the way we want them to be, right? For, for our society and for the future. All right, so Anana has two questions for you. Yes. So Anana? <laughs> well, I would like, will like you to share uh, what's different about your journey and what are you working on right now? 
Thank you. Um, it's so cool because I think the last time I spoke at Bit Basel, I talk about I talked about a future project. I think hoping that it will come true, and it did. I'm actually one of the winners for um, Transient Lab Innovation Project, where I actually trained my own AI models to include vitiligo, which is a skin condition. So every hour, the NFT changes, so you can mint whichever hour you want to show diversity within AI. And um, that project, uh, allowed me to use what I learned and to add it into my AI fashion week competition. So something incredible is happening with AI and fashion. And because of how welcoming it is, um, it's being featured now, the AI Fashion Week competition with Vogue. Um, Photo Vogue is also very involved, based Milano. It was 200 designers competing, and I just found out two days ago that I am one of the finalists. And um, so this is amazing because it is, I think I'm one of the few that is a crossover of mainstream fashion and Web3 and NFTs. And it is so fun to be a part of it, to be one of the first, and to have you know, Vogue and Elle magazine really embracing AI in such a different way. And the winners get a brand um, deal with Revolve, and they'll manufacture um, the collections of five winners. And it's really exciting to be a part of it and to it's a weird thing because I, I'm in the fashion industry, went into art, and it's like a full circle of AI taking me back into the mainstream fashion industry. So you'll see, we're seeing like um, a full circle and and mass adoption through AI and fashion. And do you have another interesting project you're working in right now? Ah, um, that is. That project is the um, innovative NFT, dynamic NFT, and how can we take NFTs as we know them as art into the next level of having them change and having an interactive relationship with your collectors and having them create with you your art. So there's so many ways to do it. I know there's artists that the collector can actually dictate how they want the art to change so they can collect it at that moment. Um, and I just love you know, the name of it, it's innovative, and you can use AI in a way to um, write in codes and have, let's say if you want your art to have a story where I start once upon a time, and the collector can say there was a bird, and the bird appears, and that's what you meant. So I see such a amazing way to think outside of the box, and um, if we can just keep that in mind, especially the creatives here, like there is, you can create, whatever you want, you know, put in the work and like lead it, lead it on and connect with others. But um, this space is super exciting, super creative, and um, it's a beautiful way to show the other, the world, right, who have the negative connotations of, of NFTs, how deep it really is, like how creative you can be. Um, and we're the ones who are leading it, right? And we can lead it beautifully and inviting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, a big round of applause for Wilde Martinez. And now we'd like to welcome Lisette and Deborah, Lisette Jaramillo and Deborah Carrizo. So these two brilliant women come from very cool industries. So real estate with Lisette and then a tech background with Deb. So we've got some questions for them. They're also from Colombia and from Argentina, so they come from a long way. And I really want to know, uh, what are you working on right now? And what's your, your passion in Web3? Okay. okay, thank you. <laughs> well, first of all, I have to say that was a long, long flight to come here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I'm Deborah Carrizo, I'm a software engineer, so I've been te in tech for more than 25 years. And uh, I started my first company like more than 10 years ago, and it was a software factory. Um, 
all the time I was surrounded by men. I used to be the only one in the room and sometimes in, in the building. So <laughs> I'm super happy that this new technology is giving us the opportunity to be so, so diverse. And I'm working hand by hand with people from totally different backgrounds. And the kind of solutions that we need nowadays uh, require that. So uh, I used to have requirements in a document to build a platform before a long time ago. And now it's like I have to go inside the communities, talk to them, show the, the technology to the people, and let them define what are we going to do? What are they going to build? So uh, for me, I'm super happy with this new opportunity. Um, I think I forgot a question. Well, you can see my passion is technology. I breathe technology, I did technology. So every time somebody said, you're a workaholic, I'm like, no, I'm a passionate about it. Um, I love technology. I consider that it's a superpower. Uh, we can use it for good or not, so it's on our hands that. So, but I truly believe that technology is here to improve people's lives. So uh, that's my side of the technology uh, ecosystem. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for having me here. I'm so grateful to be among this amazing woman. Um, in my industry, which is real estate, I've been practicing real estate for 14 years. Um, before that, it was mortgage. So I've always been, um, my passion is self sovereignty self-custody, changing the narrative, um, using technology to really bring solutions, but to the people, not to the same investors, uh, the big dogs, no, I'm more about uh, democratizing real estate, and that's why I'm passionate about blockchain and what it brings to the industry. So I was just a little bit of background of what brings me here. Um, I was, I'm also the, to, the first realtor in Orlando, which is where I'm, I'm based at, uh, who NFT a real estate property. Mm -hmm. I look forward to more projects in the US as well. Um, thank you for having me here again. So. My question of mine who was already um, venturing with Web3 in South America with football players and the IP rights and it happened to be a, a long term investor. I mean from even when we used to do mortgages together. Um, so he proposed uh, to start using the technology with one of the homes or one of the properties that we have close together. And an, that was a, an amazing challenge because then I took a pause in my career to learn the underground technology and this was mind-blowing. I noticed obviously that he brought a new approach to my career, um, a f more freedom uh, approach to my career. I, as a realtor, been able to only sell the land within the state of Florida because that's where my license allows me to. Um, it, it's restrictive and buying real estate today is very restrictive. There's a lot of friction because there's a lot of middle men involved and that's something that we need to change and that's what technology it makes a big impact, at least in my field. So that's, that's what got me into Web3. I'm so grateful to continue and I look forward to just doing it uh, more land and ownership on Web3, we want more click and buy experiences, we want secure transactions, we want transparency, and we want, like I said, democratization of real estate. Excellent, thank you ladies. So our final question for you is the same that we had for our other wonderful panelists. What would you tell your younger self? What advice? Oh my gosh, <laughs> just trust yourself and be prepared because I always say, used to say the same. When I went to the school at the beginning, uh, we didn't have like a calculator, right? We were using, <laughs> we were using just papers, and, and now I have a super powerful cell phone in my pocket. It's like seven processors, four cameras, and it's, it's amazing. It's mind blowing. 
how I came from that <laughs> and actually I learned to code just writing code and now it's like I'm, while you are writing it's like everything is fixing and showing you what is wrong and we can write all together so um, just be prepared and learn as much as you want and as you can. What would I tell my younger self? Um, I've been so brave. <laughs> I think I give that to my, um, just take, take every opportunity. Everybody is, is here or whoever you coincide with is, who I coincide with is, is a learning, is an opportunity that I can take to take myself further. So I see, be teachable and see everyone as a teacher. That's why I keep telling myself and I love it because these big opportunities comes from just this IRL connections. That's why uh, Women of Web3 have been so empowered in my career and the path that we're looking for. Currently, we, because I met this amazing women, we were able to put forces together and we're now working on a amazing project for the whole Web3 community. It's gonna be based out in Costa Rica and it's gonna be a fully uh, tokenized village where people can have fractional ownership, where people can have uh, enjoy uh, utility and dividends from what they own and you don't have to own the whole thing. You can start for as slow as, and I don't know if I should give details, but um, owning something with $10,000, $5,000 is obviously a lot better than having $500,000 in, in the bank and buying a property. So now you can do it and, and we're taking it to the next level with Debbie, so I'm so grateful to meet them and to take this to the next level. So stay tuned for what's coming on that project. Yeah, excellent. And so. I, I also have the same question for Anana. So Anana, what would you tell your younger self? I mean, these incredible women, starting with Anana, her art is being sent to the moon. Elevate us in very cool ways. And then Lisette, she, is the, she sold the first NFT home here in Orlando, Florida. So incredible, incredible. So Anana, in closing, what would you tell your younger self? Um, I will tell her that her dreams are gonna come true, so she should be dream big. And she should connect with you guys earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Beat Basel, for making dreams come true. Yeah. And what, uh, I'll end with, you never know who you're inspiring. So as I mentioned, I have a radio show called Web Tres Al Aire, and it, it's, you can listen to it from anywhere in the world. And uh, you know the Instagram, on Instagram you can put notes, who's familiar with that, that you can put notes on how you're feeling for the day? Yeah, okay. So a few people are familiar with that. So one day I put that I was ready for a drink. It, it was like the, th the end of the year. And I had a mentee that reached out to me and she said, I'll go have a drink with you. And I was like, okay, you live on the other side of town. I literally live in rural, a rural area for outside of Phoenix. And she, she said, no, I'll meet you halfway or wherever you want me to meet you. So I agreed, I showed up, we, we got caught up and she had been my mentee through her undergrad and through her masters. So af she's like, you know, there's something I've been wanting to tell you. She's like, you've impacted my Sundays. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she looked kind of mad. And she's like, my mom will not let me listen to my reggaeton on Saturdays. And, and I was like, why? And she's like, because my mom has no idea what you're talking about with this blockchain technology. But she said, I'm listening to Sandy and you're not changing it. So no more reggaeton for you. So every Saturday she listens to my radio show while she cleans, right? As Latinas know how that goes. Um, but she said, I, she said, mom, but you don't even know anything about blockchain technology. Like, you know, and she's like, it doesn't matter because when you were at ASU, I attended ASU events, and this is a first-generation student. She said, and I felt so welcomed by Sandy and all of the different events that we were at. Because they were those first-generation students, the student that her parents would come with her to everything. And so I'm an immigrant, I'm first generation, so for me it was really cool to see parents go with their, with their daughter to everything that she was doing and just being so proud. So I just wanna say is that 
You never know who you're inspiring, and it's so important how you make others feel. And so with that said, these 17 women, well, including myself, so these powerful 16 women that joined me for Women of Web3 at the UN, they all made me feel welcomed in this space. They have always been there answering any questions and helping me understand the ecosystem and also creating really cool projects and empowering each other. But they also inspire me. Like I'm motivated every day to get up and be able to keep working hard in building women of Web3 because that's what it's about and that's what's gonna help us have great, great innovation, and that's how it's gonna help us make a difference. So with that, I wanna thank you all for joining us. We're very proud to co-host this with BitBasil and Let's Disrupt Digital. And well, we are women of Web3, so thank you. Yeah.